Hello everyone, my name is Adam Johnson and I'm the Lenticular Design Specialist here at Virtual Images. In this video I'd like to walk you through the appropriate steps in setting up a file for the lenticular animation effect. Files can be supplied in a few ways. We can accept a layered Photoshop file with the frames named or numbered appropriately as shown here. It's always helpful to accompany this with an animated GIF file or frame animation set up in the Photoshop timeline so we can get an idea of the amount of movement you are trying to achieve. You can also supply files as a set of flattened frames, which can be comprised of a series of JPEGs or TIFFs, keeping in mind that our minimum resolution is still 300 pixels per inch. Speaking of resolution, you can also supply full motion video files, where resolution plays an important part. We can only accept files that can be opened in QuickTime. HD video, which is set up to 1920 by 1080 is optimum, though 1080 by 720 will also work. Here's an example of HD video that we will later trim down and turn into an animated piece. The higher the resolution, the larger the lenticular output can be. HD video can be converted to about a 5x7 and still maintain some clarity, though the smaller the lenticular piece, the cleaner the image. 720x480, or standard video shown here, is usable, but the lenticular output can't be bigger than the size of a trading card. Nothing below 720x480 is usable for lenticular. As far as the amount of time we can actually capture under the lens, most of our standard lenses can capture about one second of footage, where our video lenses can capture about two to three seconds. This may not sound like a lot of time, but with the proper scene selection and experienced trimming of the clip, we can give you an end result that will be sure to tell the whole story. Again, we will look at this video as an example. Now this is a long clip that has a lot going on. It helps to submit a longer video clip so we have more freedom to trim. What may look usable on screen might not translate under the lens, and it helps if we can adjust the timing slightly. Try to pick an area of the film that has constant elements like a static background. This helps reduce confusion and brings the focus to the important elements. These two clips are taken from different areas to show how one can be converted to an effective lenticular. This clip follows the basic rules. Elements animating on top of themselves, background primarily constant, not an overwhelming amount of movement, while still being engaging to the viewer. The other clip is all over the place. There is too much going on and it's hard to make out any of the key areas. So even though the intention might be to convert this entire video to a lenticular, we are able to simplify it to something a little more practical that will work well and produce a dynamic lenticular piece. When it comes down to it, the lens and desired effect ultimately dictate how many frames we can actually use. Looping animations like this one actually give the appearance of more frames and make for a very cool end result. If the animation has a specific start and stop, we like to hold on the first and last frame as shown here. This decreases the amount of actual frames we can use, but helps to reinforce the message of the piece. And keep in mind, we will always submit an animated GIF file that clearly outlines our recommendations and the number of usable frames before moving on to an actual proof. So that about covers the basics for animation file prep. These tips and more can be found on our website, virtual-images.com. And don't hesitate to call us with any questions or for a consultation because our goal is to provide you with the best lenticular animated product we can. Thanks for watching.